Uh, welcome back to Ask a Trojan. We're here with junior linebacker Ray Maluga. Thanks for joining us, Ray. Anytime, anytime. Um, all right, the first question is from Bill in Port Angeles, Washington. He says, NFL Hall of Fame offensive guard Dan Deardorff once said of Dick Buckus, the prototypical linebacker, he arrived in a foul mood. When you arrive at the point of tackle, what's going through your mind? Do you like to intimidate ball carriers and receivers, or is it all just business? Uh, when I come to the ball carrier, I just, you know, my emphasis is just um, just to get the ball carrier down, um, make sure I do my job and um, make the tackle and not try to do too much by, um, you know, trying to get a kill shot or, but sometimes you can't, you can't control that. Um, it actually comes at the, uh, at the point of attack, but uh, most of the time, you know, I'm just going up to the ball carrier and um, trying to do my job by uh, getting the ball carrier down and, um, you know, when I get a kill shot, I get a kill shot. If not, then... No, everything just happens when I get there. Okay, sort of a follow-up to that. Paul in Santa Ana says, do you try to make eye contact when you make those crushing hits? Um, I try not to um, try to make them see me when I come, make the tackle. Um, I try to um, sneak up to them and um, actually when they don't see you, you can actually get a kill shot. And when they see you, you know, they're going to try and you know, put a juke move or you know, try and get away from you. So eye contact is really not... An emphasis when I'm when I'm getting to the block here. Say anything to them afterwards, or uh, I'm trying to make sure they know my my number, and um, you know, next time I come around, um, they won't try and do anything special. Okay, uh, Mark on the Sunset Strip says, "Why'd you cut your hair?" Uh, it was some personal reasons. Um, my mom actually didn't like you know that whole fact of uh, growing hair. Uh, I grew up in a Christian uh, family, and um, you know, we're all taught to um, look more like a Christian uh, shave. I have a clean cut haircut and um, dress up nicely, but um, as for this, it's just you know something that just you know I just kept going because you know I just just wanted wanted a new look. Yes. All right, uh, Stephen Morgan Hill says, "What was the process you took to make the decision to return for your senior season, and was this an individual decision, or did you and Brian Cushing discuss it?" Uh, it was uh, totally an uh, individual uh, decision. Um, I didn't even tell my mom, I didn't tell my brother, I didn't tell nobody. Um, I decided to come for some uh, um, some reasons as, you know, just trying to get better. Um, you know, the NFL won't run away. College football, you know, you only play it, you know, the years you got and you can't come back. So I'm just trying to have fun while I can and um, just get better. And uh, what better coach to coach you than uh, Coach Norton and Coach Carroll. All right, Jeff in Northridge says, with all the high expectations going into the year, has this season been a disappointment to you thus far? You know, coming in here, all the, all the, you know, the, the accolades and all that, you know, just it was something I didn't look look towards upon, and um, you know, people might have said that you know I'm this, I'm that, and um, it's like I wasn't trying to play upon that. I wasn't trying to show, you know, that basically I got to live up to my hype. Um, Am I excited about this year? Um, you know, I really didn't play up to par. You know, I made some mistakes here and there, and um, that's exactly why I'm coming back for another year. You know, I'm just trying to get better and um, fix those mistakes. All right, um, Matthew in San Pedro says, I'd really like to see you play more outside linebacker in an NFL 3-4 defense. Uh, I think you'd be a terror coming off the end on the blitz with your speed. What would you think of a change like that when you get to the NFL? Um, basically, wherever they, you know, wherever they put me, you know, I'm gonna do my best to um, execute that position. And um, coaches put me outside. You know, I'd love to play outside. I love to, um, you know, get a shot at the quarterback 20, 25 times a game. And um, basically, wherever they put me, um, I'll be excited to play. And um, you know, I'll try my best to um, execute that position the best I can. Okay. The last last question is from Tom from Guam. He says, I have Polynesian, Samoan, and Tongan symbolism tattooed on both my arms and I'm very familiar with the depth and significance of their meanings and the value to an individual and their family. I'm wondering if you're willing to say much about them, their significance and meaning to you and your family. How old were you when they were done, and who is your Tefuga tattoo master? Um, my tattoos are you know, symbolizing my heritage and uh, my culture. Um, I got my first tattoo when I was a senior in high school. and. Um, can, can we can we see him or can you roll up those sleeves? Or? It's just like you know, it goes from here to the top of my shoulder blade. So, um, but basically, I just symbolize in the light.
you know, our coconut trees, you know, the things that we make our baskets with, um, you know, the flowers that, you know, the, our state flower. It basically symbolizes just, you know, pride, strength, and um, just courage. And, um, you know, I basically got it because uh, my dad wanted me to get it. So, and, um, you know, I just got a cross over here. Um, my father passed away, so, you know, something to um, symbolize him. But, you know, it's not a good good thing to do, but, you know, just something that's close to me. And um, that's, I wouldn't get any other tattoos like, you know, a mouse or a, or anything else. But, you know, as long as they um, symbolize my culture, you know, my mom wouldn't be too fond about it. So, sorry, bro. All right, thanks a lot, Ray. Thank you.